Hey, everybody's favorite cookie show is back. <laughs> anyway, so this is well, formerly known as Cooking with Lindsay, it is now Globe Cooking with Lindsay. I am sharing dishes designed to transform you physically, mentally, and emotionally from within so you can live a purposeful, empowering life. Because I really want you guys to look at this as we're not cooking, we are transforming. Because cooking the right way, putting the foods in your body that work with you, those nutrients have a way to elevate you body, beauty, and mind. As well as when you're cooking, cooking is an art. And a lot of us, this is the only chance we have to work with our hands. And it is scientifically proven that it is when you work with your hands in art, it's very therapeutic, very healing, very expanding and strengthening. So anyway, so we are going to get on to our new series. So we're going to piggyback off the last series, which was the Garden Sexy series. So the Garden Sexy series shared with us lessons learned from the garden and how we can conquer and our dreams, which was capped off by my essay, Plant It Not Buried, which is a few minute read essay. I would totally encourage you guys to read it. But anyway, in the essay, I had the lessons from the garden, but it shows how in order for us to conquer our dreams, we have to go doubtless. We cannot have any self-doubt. So I just really wanted to further along this message of overcoming our self-doubt in this new series. Because one of the ways you, as it's rehearsed, right? <laughs> so one of the ways that you can overcome self-doubt is just by building confidence. And building confidence, we can build that by doing something uncomfortable every day. And you can definitely do something uncomfortable every day in the kitchen by working with vegetables that are a little bit intimidating. We don't see them every day. So we are gonna be doing some stuff with pumpkins. So this is a pie pumpkin. You don't normally see it like year round. It's really, you can only see it like for a month or two now. And you need to get it now because it tastes so good. And I just, I don't know, I believe in mother nature. She has a way of telling us how we should eat. So we are going to work with some pumpkin and hopefully I'm gonna share with you guys a couple of different dishes. Okay. So what I like to do with a pie pumpkin, anytime I have something that's hard, because it is a little bit, talk about uncomfortable, I'm a little uncomfortable <laughs> sharing with you guys how to cut this like on air. But I like to, anytime I have something that, yes, it can stick to my, uh, what's this called? <laughs> my cutting board. It can, it can go there, but it still rolls, right? So I always like to kind of a cut a flat surface. Okay, so first of all, when you guys cut into a pie pumpkin, make sure you use a chef's knife, whether it's a Japanese or, that cut off a lot, but anyway, whether it's a Japanese or American, and make sure it's sharp. Okay, so nice flat edge. You don't have to do that if you feel very, um, um, I don't normally do that, but since I'm doing this live and like, I'm just kind of thinking that they're, not that I have superior knife skills, but it's just a little bit safer. So we wanna cut in half as close to the stem as possible. Wow, I got an easy one. Okay, so sometimes your knife will get stuck in there. And so you just kind of want to like try to tug it out with the blade away from you. So get it as close as possible to the stem. All right, awesome. So now you get two halves, which are going to have some seeds in there, which we are going to save. Do not throw away those seeds because they have a lot of nutrients and we're going to use them to top our soup. Okay, so as far as, so what we do is get out the seeds. You can start with a spoon. And then we're gonna, okay, let me see if I can show you guys this. Hold on, let me get here quick. Okay. All right, so here we go. So just take regular spoon, whatever, and just dig in there. Okay. And you, first thing, what I like, I'll do dig down the spoon and then I'll use my hands. And so the flesh does adhere to the seeds. This one's gonna get so messy around here. So you want to just separate as much as you possible. And then I'll just put them, we're going to end up like washing them, but I'm just going to go ahead and put them in front of, in my strainer. And sometimes like what I'll do is I'll just kind of get as many as I can. If that, some are just like, a few are just like sticking to the flesh and I'm just going to like throw that away in our bowl. Okay. So just try to get as many out as you can. All right. I'm doing this quick. And so then, like that, just try to clean it out as much as possible. It doesn't have to be like perfect. Okay, so say we do that with both ends. 
because of course I've already done this prior. And then got our bowl, you put it to the side. And then what you're gonna do with the seeds is you want to just wash them as clean as possible. And then we're gonna set them on a paper towel to dry. I need to put my light on a little bit more. I don't know why it's so dark in here. Okay, not sure if that helps. Okay, cool. So just wash the seeds, put them like lay them out on the paper towel to air dry as much as possible. Now as far as the, the pumpkin, in order to cook this, we want a 375 degree oven and we're just gonna take a either parchment paper lined mat, uh, baking sheet or you can use, I have a silicone mat if you're environmental friendly. It just depends. Sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like doing the cleanup so I use parchment paper other times. I'll like, I'll use my silicone mat and make myself cool. So you just put it down there. You don't have to add any oil, any salt or whatever and then we're just gonna stick it in the oven. So just pretend I did that with the other half, okay? We're just kind of like rolling with time here. So 375 degree oven and we're gonna, we're gonna bake that until the skin is, this flesh is fork tender. So check it at 30 minutes because every oven is different. So of course I already have a ton for you. And you'll see I have my fork marks here. So when I say fork tender is you wanna be able to pierce it right in there, okay? And both these halves are like that. Before I move on with this, I wanna go back to the seeds. So say they're like dry, say they haven't like dried and everything, then you can like stick them on a, you can stick them just on a baking sheet and just put them in like, cause you're going to want to turn down the oven to 350 degrees when you bake the seeds cause you're going to roast them. If the seeds aren't dry by the time this is, by the time your pumpkin is cooked, I like to just put the seeds in for a little bit to dry because that way, cause we're going to be adding olive oil and some like um, spices to them. So that way it'll adhere. Okay, so that was that. Okay, cool. So you got your roasted pumpkin. It's not that hard, right? Right? But um, I understand the cutting can be a little bit intimidating. So first, we're going to make a pumpkin pie smoothie. Okay, so we're bookending our days, right? We're going to start off with a pumpkin pie smoothie, and then we're going to end our day with this pumpkin soup. You don't have to necessarily do this, but I'm going to tell you why. Either of these are good for to start your day. And if you're wondering if I wore orange because of pumpkin, I totally did. I know. I was really, really impressive. I'm also just still trying to stay bright because we did finally get some sun here in like Maryland. All right, so now if you wanted to make a pumpkin puree, because I consider it's more like a pumpkin mash, you can just put it like in your blender or you can put it in your food processor and just process it till it's like, um, more smooth and creamy, then you can use it, if you can use it for a pumpkin pie, you will have to drain it a little bit um, because this is gonna be a little bit more watery than it can. But, okay, so let's talk about this pumpkin pie smoothie and why it's so great to start your day with. Okay, I think you guys probably can already know like pumpkin, or not pumpkin smoothie, but smoothies in general are just really great to start your day because they're super convenient. I mean, you can, you don't have to use a fork and knife. Okay, so I have some of my um, pumpkin in here. I'm gonna add some, this is homemade almond butter, but you can use regular almond butter that you buy at the store. I have some ginger and some cinnamon in here. Um, when I tell people to add spices, like like use as much as you like. Like, I mean, if you love ginger, then just go crazy, especially nowadays, because like we're into this like sixth season or whatever, and ginger is like highly inflammatory, so just add as much as you want if you love cinnamon. That's a, it helps regulate our blood sugar level levels. <laughs> Sorry, I have like uh, so much information to said. So now I'm going to be adding, for sweetness, I'm gonna be adding, I have some dates. You want them to be softened, so I'm trying to, I try to soften them in some hot water with some vanilla. I'm not sure it's gonna be softened as much, but I'll tell you what to do after that. Um, I'm also gonna be adding, some frozen zucchini. I talked about this before when I did a zucchini series about how like, you, can, you can use frozen zucchini to kind of pump up your smoothie. So I'm gonna do that now. You can also, instead of using the dates, because the dates are used to sweeten it, you can also do like frozen banana, but um, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the dates instead. And I'm gonna add a little bit of like coconut cream. I do have a little bit of water in there already because you can just use cook, um, water, I mean regular water. 
And that is really it. Make sure that's it. Okay, so again, when you have something like this, when it's something that you can just like sip, it's easily digestible. It's so good for the morning time because it's super convenient. You can drink this while you type at work. You can drink this while you're traveling. Also, um, if you say you work out in the morning, this is going to get your body in the muscle recovery zone like faster because the nutrients are going to get your body faster. But also too, when you eat something that's like easily digestible in the morning, less like blood flow is going to be needed to digest and the more blood flow is going to be going to your mind so you can think more clearly so you can well, we all, we need our mind during the day well we always need our mind but during the day and then also to less blood flow needs uh, more blood flow is going to go to just our limbs so we're just like more energetic so and then with this one in particular we have vitamin a in our pumpkin which vitamin a is a very immune boosting which especially now you know, with what's going on, we need, but regardless, it's great to start our day with mean beasting because we're around more germs and everything like that. And then with the gingers, I also highly anti inflammatory. So I'm not. <laughs> and so what's going to happen is since, like, it seems like the zucchini is still a little bit frozen, probably needs some time to rest, I'm going to let it rest. And also, possibly. The dates need some time to soften some more. So we are going to let that rest some more. And we're going to be moving on to this curry pumpkin soup, which I like to call a relaxing curry pumpkin soup because this soup has a lot of nutrients that are going to help us relax, which is mainly in the pumpkin seeds. Okay, so I kind of went fast. I know, I'm just getting back to these lives. I'm really like, sorry. I'm like, sometimes I go fast because I just want to be like, you know, um, just don't want them to be so long. But anyway, so back to our pumpkin seeds. So our pumpkin seeds we've taken out. They're nice and like dry now. We're really just going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Um, and you can keep them plain and mix them and everything. I'm not going to add like salt to them just because they are going to be a topper. And I just, I don't know, I just don't want to add salt. For this dish though, I'm making them in particular for this dish, so I just do want to add a little bit of spice. I'm going to add some like jalapeno spice because, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. So anyway, but you know, you can make these if you want to make a whole batch of this. You can just like make a whole batch like plain and just kind of stick it, then make them and stick them in your freezer. Okay. So I probably could add more, but whatever. So and anytime like you put something in the oven that you want to crisp up, just make sure you give it, like, spread as much as you can to allow some, like, air to circulate. Okay, so 350 degree oven, this oven is such a one at all, but whatever. All right, uh, pumpkin's in there, I forgot about that. Looks like it's still cooking, so it must be still hot. Okay, so, all right, so I have, like, since my oven's in the back, I totally, like, thought I bought this, like, burner and this, like, clear pot to, like, teach you guys in front so you guys could see, but I'm just, like, I didn't get a chance to try it, and I'm not sure, like, there are some rules, so I'm gonna, like, do it back here, so hopefully you guys will be able to get the idea. Okay, so you want a medium-high heat, All right? I love to use Dutch ovens for my soups. Um... I don't know, they, I just feel like they like cook really great. And they are a little heavier bottom, so they took take a little bit longer to heat up again. So what you wanna do with any kind of soup, usually the first step is just to, usually it's just to coat the bottom with extra virgin olive oil. So, and when we want it that to heat up, of course I probably should have done that before. We can go back to the blender now. <laughs> so, I mean, what I wanna say about um, the, um, the pumpkin some more, is that like the main thing is is like the cooking time right so this is just something though if you know you're going to use it that night you can just as soon as you get home like put it in the oven you don't have to like babysit it or anything like that or you can always do it the day before not a big deal so now with this pumpkin soup this is like so good first of all again it's always nice to have at night time just like the morning time it's always nice to have something that's like easily digestible but also what is going to happen with the this soup is, again, we're adding a lot of anti-inflammatory. So we're adding ginger, we're adding turmeric, we're going to add garlic, highly anti-inflammatory. It's really important right now. And also with the pumpkin seeds. So the pumpkin seeds are going to be, we're going to top it with 
um, top it on the soup. So what that's going to do is several things. One is going to add crunch. And anytime we add crunch, it's going to add a little extra texture, you know, and so a little bit more um, satiating feel. And it's going to slow up our eating. But two, pumpkin seeds are actually a natural form of magnesium and L-tryptophan. Yes, I said that right. So, and both, so L-tryptophan turns into serotonin, which helps relax us, and magnesium is known to relax us. So that's why we want to use those pumpkin seeds. So this is a perfect soup to, or this is a perfect dish to have at night. It's also really, uh, I don't know, just feels good. Nice and warming. All right, so hopefully that's like warmed up. If you ever wanna test your, if you ever wanna test your pot to see if it's like, warm, just, you know, throw some water, see if it sizzles, whatever. Sometimes I actually just throw whatever food I'm doing and, you know, see if it sizzles as well. Okay, that is not really ready, but that's okay. <laughs> so we're gonna do it anyway, and hope that goes up. So, again, because it's like, when it's like heavier, when it's heavier bottom, it just takes longer. So what we do is we put the onion in, okay, and then we want to just stir it so it coats with the extra virgin olive oil. And this uh, this onion is diced small because we're not going to be blending this soup. We're not going to be making this a puree, okay? Because we just we just don't feel like doing that, all right? So just the extra stuff we have to do. Okay, so we're gonna have that in there, that onion. Now we're gonna add our spices. Like I said, we're gonna add ginger and garlic and turmeric. Um, it's always best to have fresh ginger and fresh um, um, garlic. However, I'm just using powder because actually mine is homemade and I just didn't have time to do it. So, okay. so we're gonna pour, put that in there. Again, with the spices, if a recipe calls for this amount of this and this amount of that, if you like more ginger and you like more garlic, like freaking add it in there because it's so good for you. So just, you know, it's just, I know sometimes because I've learned because I've held back on spices because like some people are like really sensitive to it, but Spices, man, they like provide so many nutrients for us. And there's like, I mean, if, I'm not a calorie person, but they're like basic, they're, they're calorie free. So, and they're just so powerful. Okay, now we can have the sizzle. Okay, so now we're gonna just add some black pepper. And we are gonna add a little bit of salt, sea salt, kosher salt, whatever salt you have. Just make sure your salt doesn't have any extra nonsense in it. I don't want to see any calcium sulfate to help the thickening. That's just not true. We don't want any of that. We want clear salt, clean. Okay, so we want to mix this again. We want to coat all the onions, okay? So all the onions are coated with the spices. Next, we're going to add some curry paste. So this is something I do approve of. <laughs> Give a thumbs up. Oh God, I never do that. Um, <laughs> But anyway, curry paste actually is, there's no extra added nonsense. I'm using Thai kitchen red curry paste. It's it's all fine and, and dandy and everything. I totally approve of this. So I'll use a good like two teaspoons of this. I'm gonna have to put on this fan. So hopefully, so good two teaspoons of that. All right, mix that up again. It's always good to like make sure like all like, you know, the onions and before or like anything you add is like kind of covered with the spices and everything kind of get that aromatics going first before you add anything else from what I learned. All right I'm so sorry you can't see that. Okay work on that. <laughs> but seriously the pot that I got is like this big. Okay I need to go back to my okay so now we're gonna let that cook a few minutes but we're gonna get ready for we're gonna start adding our pot this is gonna be so good. I mean, like literally you could just scoop this and eat this like as it is and you'd be like, oh my God. You And you'll, you'll know the difference like between this and canned pumpkin. I was thinking you probably could, cause again, pie pumpkin is only available for like a month or two, which kind of sucks. Cause I don't, I've never really seen it around Thanksgiving time. But if you like want to make a pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving, that's like totally nutritious or delicious. Um, you can freeze this, but I just, I have not done that. Okay, so I'm gonna add all of this in there. This is just a mesh. You could make it like, you honestly could make it more of a puree form for the soup, but I just don't feel like doing that. 
<laughs> so I don't really think it's that necessary. So scoop out as much as the rest of this pumpkin as you can. Alright. Alright, just pretend I have all that in there. Actually, I'm going to do more of it. I mean, it's good. Pumpkin also has a ton of fiber, so just so you know. All right, perfect. So we got all that in there. All right, now we're going to add some coconut. You can add coconut milk or coconut cream with water, whatever you have, or you can add veggie broth, which would be great. Again, though, you have to watch your veggie broth. So we're going to add a few, more like a third cup of coconut cream. And now, if you're interested in sugar coconut cream, you need to add some water. So we are going to add some water. And then you just want to add water until it's like, honestly, the desired, th the desired consistency you want. Like, it depends on how thin and thick you want your soups. Just mix that up. Okay, this is a very chunkier soup because this wasn't like pureed. Again, if you want like a smoother consistency soup, just you know, puree your pumpkin, <laughs> but it's so good. I just, I don't know, I, don't, I, I like to omit steps when I can. Okay, so you just want to cook this. So you just want to cook this for 15 minutes. Now, if you want to add some more stuff, if you want to, like this could be just a fine like side uh, soup, like this curry soup, but if you want to make it a full meal, like I would like to, I always like to add greens. Okay, originally when I did this soup, I added kale. But when I went to the grocery store, the kale looked kind of sad, and I was like, like really sad. So I was like, I can't do that. So I am going to be adding some broccoli, but I blanched it because I'm going to add it at the end because I just want more nutrients. But also too protein wise, um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I'm add I'm adding pressed cubed tofu. So I'm going to be adding that to the mix. You can also add, if you're not into like tofu, I'm sure, I'm sure chicken would be okay. So at this point, when you're doing it like this, I like to turn it down to like a medium low. And then this is when you would want to like cover it and just let it simmer. And you would, you would kind of like want to just let it simmer for like, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. I mean, it's on low. It's not going to kill anybody. Now we're going to go back to our smoothie to see how it's going. Yeah. See, like, multitasking at its best, right? Alright, we're almost finished, guys. Alright, back to our smoothie. Okay. some more water and let it thin out a little bit more because <laughs> it just like didn't fill the whole cup oh my god mm. wow that is like super delicious I could have probably held back on the dates just a little bit but again everybody's sweetness level is different but that is me great for wow breakfast option I did not tell you though if you want to add a little bit more protein I mean Add vanilla protein powder. That would be amazing in this to make it more like protein rich. I don't really think there's a lot of protein in it to be honest with you. So, but it is delicious and it's very, very thick. That, what I made was two servings, not one. Okay, back to the soup. 
this is looking delicious. So now I'm going to add my blanched broccoli. And the reason why I did the blanched broccoli is because you could just put the broccoli in and cook it some more. But I, um, I've not tried that yet. <laughs> so, but also too, like with broccoli, I just want to have as much nutrients as possible and to cook it less is best. And I just love that green, vibrant look to it. So I'm going to add that now. All right. You know what? I feel like I want you guys to see this. I feel like I'm cheating this out of something. So let's break off this. Let me just uh, move this for a second. So I seriously need you guys to like see this. Because it does look so good. So far, doesn't look good. All right, let me move some stuff around my really small kitchen here. All right, All right guys, we're almost done. We're in the home stretch. But you see how beautiful this is looking? Oh my god! So we just kind of mix this around, and basically it's cooked now because. I mean, it would be nice to cook the tofu just a little bit longer. I would like 15 minutes, but just pretend that was 15 minutes of simmering. And then you add the broccoli, and then we're going to plate. All right, we got our bowl here. I mean, I could probably add more, like, water to this. But, oh my god, it smells so freaking good. Yeah, this is like... All right. Add this here. This is actually more of a couldn't more of like a stir fry consistency because it's so thick. But oh my god, it just smells freaking amazing. Okay. So again, when you make a soup, just make it to your like consistency. All right. Alright, so we got that. Let me move this back here. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I'm really glad I do these lives because it's really hard sometimes to get motivated to cook for yourself. Okay, so we got this. Now we're going to top it. So we have our jalapeno pumpkin seeds that I made. And we have, alright. So I'm going to top it with that. This is going to add, some, again, the crunch and all those relaxing sleep nutrients. <laughs> we got some cilantro, which is always great. You could always add a dab of like, cream as well. A little extra dab of coconut cream. That can like, you want to like, whisk it to make it really pretty. Makes it look pretty. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes. It's all about the it's all about the finished product, right? It's all about the curb appeal. So you just again, you are what you eat, you eat pretty. You can always, if you don't want to do the pumpkin seeds, you know, for the, the extra crunch and stuff like that, you could do like chopped peanuts. And you could always add your jalapeno rings for extra spice. But let um, me just need a little bit extra cilantro and cilantro is detoxifying as well okay and I, I need to clean up the sides here oh, that looks so good wow. and look at this guys do you see can I just make sure <laughs> do you see how beautiful that looks oh my god it smells incredible and it's just so nutritious and so good for you and it's just gonna set your mind oh actually you know what it kind of ended up melting i think the coconut melt melts oh my gosh this looks so good i'm so excited so i hope you guys enjoyed this pumpkin i love these lives they allow me to like you know kind of make mistakes anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed the first <laughs> the first uh, um, 
was this episode back and this pumpkin season uh, pumpkin episode and next week I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do but I will be back next Wednesday with another vegetable that is uncomfortable yet something that you have to have in your stomach and I will be posting these recipes on nutricouture.com just watch out on social media when I do that thank you so much for watching I so appreciate it thank you